Did you know that the fashion industry is the second most polluting industry after oil? And that every sixth person living on this planet right now is working in some part of this industry, making it the most labor dependent industry to date. A great way to start the video. <laughs> I mean, I've been passionate about this topic for a long time and I really wanted to share my thoughts and some facts about this because it's it's kind of similar to animal rights and you know all sorts of environmental issues and world hunger and human rights and things that nobody talks about and everybody ignores as if it's just you know somewhere far away you know we're not associated with that even though every single time we go out and buy things we directly contribute to either making this world a better place and those problems kind of resolving them or making it worse. And I feel like this is really good timing to talk about the subject because Black Friday is coming up and this happens every year so it will be relevant in any time really. Uh, but you know, the human population is constantly growing, we're breeding more consumers to this planet. Um, so they'd rather be educated and not ignorant about where their stuff is coming from, what are they buying in a store, and just to know that they're paying for not only what they're getting, but how it's made and all the resources that were used to create this thing, and is it really worth it, and can you even like put a price to, you know, pollution and shit that we do to the environment in the process, so these are the topics that I wanted to cover today. And let's start with these statistics. So we consume around 400 times more clothing than we did just 20 years ago. It's a shocking number. And every single person in a year like gets rid of, just disposes around 38 kilograms of clothing. And where the fuck is it going? To the landfill. Because most of it is not biodegradable. It just sits there for eons whilst releasing harmful chemicals to the environment. Because most of the clothing is made by cotton, and cotton, 80% of the cotton is GMO cotton. And this is another topic I should be talking about. And let's start with it. Let's start of the bottom of the supply chain. As greedy human species, we try to get as much of everything from everything, especially nature and vulnerable beings. We try to factorize our lands, trying to get as much yield as we possibly can short term. Who thinks about the future? Like, who gives a fuck about that? We just need the result right now. We need the money right now that we later on will not be able to use because there will be just no resources and you cannot eat money, okay, people? But back to the bottom supply chain. So most of the seeds that are used worldwide that are sold and, you know, spread or whatever are GMO seeds. And there's this monopoly that sells those seeds and create those seeds. And it's called Monsanto. I'll probably have to make another video just on Monsanto, but in short, they promise farmers that they'll have bigger yields and they like they own seeds, these GMO seeds. They they also own the pests that you'll have to use in order to grow these seeds. And they also own drugs like prescription medicine and other drugs. So you can imagine what's happening here. And these farmers, they just believe that they'll have these massive yields and they'll get profits so they invest in these seeds and actually these seeds are like super expensive they're 17,000 percent more expensive plus you have to buy these pests to actually grow the seeds and these pests are like ecological narcotics the more you use it the more you need them and these farmers end up being in debt because you know the promises don't fulfill they don't have these yields and the land is totally fucked, totally depleted of nutrients. And back to the farmers, these farmers that get in debt, it's like these companies go to them and say like, you're owing me this much of money and if you don't give it to me like tomorrow, I'm going to just take your land. And these farmers end up committing suicide because you know, there's just no use of living. And in India, it's around 250,000 people in a year, farmers, that do that. It's, a, it's around one person in every 30 minutes. They just go to their land, drink this bottle of pests, and, 
yeah, they're found there. And it's considered to be the largest way of committing suicide in recorded history. So every time you go to H&M and buy that $2 t-shirt, now you know the actual price you're paying. And I mean, this is not a whole price. There's water streams that are totally fucked because they're polluted by chemicals now that they can't be used. So not only soil, not only air, also water and whole regions are left without drinkable or usable water. And just because it's in India or somewhere else far away where you know you can't see it, you're not directly affected by, it doesn't mean that you just have to close your eyes for it and just ignore it. You have to take responsibility because you directly contribute to that. And moving on the supply chain, there's workers that don't get fair wages, obviously. Even though it's one of the most profitable industries earning around three billion dollars annually, it still cannot guarantee its workers rights, aka safety standards and fair wages, which results in more deaths. An example would be the factory collapse of 2013 in Bangladesh, where it took the lives of more than 1,000 people and more were injured. So this is another price you pay whenever you go buying things in retail shops. And the workers aren't paid properly and their safety and rights are not considered because the retailers are not stupid. They just want the whole profit all to themselves. So they try to find a place where they can fabricate the, their clothes the cheapest. That's also why workers a lot of the time are beaten and the work givers explain it as, you know, the retailers squeeze us, so we should squeeze our workers. The people that say, well, at least those people have work, you know, they can be working in a lot of worse places, but what can be worse? I mean, working insane hours and being paid $10 a month, it's inhumane, it's not okay. And just because it's not you who experience it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And I'm sure that you wouldn't want to be treated like that. Also adding that workers are exposed to a considerable amount of chemicals in these factories, which later reflects as birth defects in babies, all sorts of diseases and cancers in these people. And knowing that they have no voice in this system is insane. And finally coming to us as consumers. I mean, there's a lot to say about this part of this whole system, but just the way we treat the things that we buy and own as if it's disposable, as if fashion is disposable, it's not, man. And also how we are influenced by billboards and magazines and advertisements saying that, well, if you just own this thing, you will be happy. You'll be satisfied the next week. Well, if you just still have this thing, you'll be satisfied next day. No, you just need this thing and you'll be happy, finally happy. Things cannot make you happy. No matter what you own, you cannot own or buy happiness. I mean, we are so caught up in the system that we have to buy more stuff, we have to earn, or, or, ugh, earn more just to buy things, just to afford that latest model. It's just a physical thing and when we get it, we never think about the people that build them. them. It. And you can never be satisfied. There's always going to be this one thing that you don't own, that you cannot afford. That if you have that, and maybe finally your life will be complete. Well, guess what? It's not going to. And the solution is so easy. You just don't have to buy into it because you don't need it. I mean, how much clothing do you actually need? Back in the days, there were just two seasons in the shop, the winter season and the summer season. Sorry. Now there's like 50 seasons in H&M or Zara which constantly make you crave a certain thing like I need that blazer, I need that jacket, I need those trousers, I need that skirt, that fucking scarf I need those running shoes, I need those shorts, I need that fucking cycling jersey Oh man, you don't need it You have enough You don't need more <laughs> Like how much clothing do you actually wear out. I know these days they make it like shittier, <laughs> it's less quality, it doesn't last as long, 
Well, it's made that way, so you can be just constantly hooked up on the supply chain going out for a fucking new t-shirt because the old one has a hole in it. How about just investing in a good, sturdy piece that will last long and, you know, even if it's on the pricier side, you will just know that what you're actually paying for. Organic cotton. <laughs> fair wages. If you don't even want to do that, which I find it hard to find things that are ethically made and, you know, environmentally friendly made, how about shopping secondhand, <laughs> hipster style? That's something that I do and I think that there's just so many things that you can find and discover in thrift shops. They're just this whole of history and I don't know, my mom says that <laughs> she says that those clothes are taken from dead bodies. <laughs> I mean, I can just laugh about that. <laughs> you never know where they're coming from, but that aspect of it all just makes the whole experience for me even more special. Like there are many stories that I can tell about thrift shops and the items that you can find there, but the overall message on this video is compassion over convenience. And I know it's easier to go to H&M and buy that $2 t-shirt. And yeah, I'll call H&M out because I know more shit about that company than any other retailer or sweatshop or clothes shop or whatever. Because it's easy, it's convenient, it's cheap, it's trendy, everybody's doing that. Like, who thinks about the quality of our water, soil, air, how these clothes are produced, who makes them? Are they fairly paid? How they live? How they treat it? Only compassionate people think that. Only crazy people think about that whenever they go clothes shopping. And I mean, there's it's not a big hassle to go to a different store, to go to a thrift shop, to do at least some research, to not buy into it, to try to find more ethically and environmentally friendly things. And yeah, there's also like social pleasure pleasure <laughs> pressure that comes into the play and you know billboards and magazines and uh, all that shit but if you don't pay attention to that if you are not living in that consumerism world it's easy i mean i'm not struggling <laughs> i just find it the same way as if you go to a grocery shop and you don't buy into the dairy, eggs, cheese, meat. Even though it's cheaper, even though it's more convenient, you don't buy into it because it's not ethical. It's not environmentally friendly. It's not healthy. It's the same way with clothes. It's the same way with anything. Somebody somewhere got fucked up in the process. And some things have more um, let's say, pain and suffering attached to them than others, so let's just try to find the least harmful one, yeah. So that's my rant, that's my me trying to inform you about the fast fashion industry, um, yeah. The next one will be Monsanto, I guess, maybe something else. So until then, go vegan, get amongst it and carve the fuck up. Bye. This enormous, rapacious industry that is generating so much profit, why is it that it is unable to support millions of its workers properly? The actual business model is completely unsustainable. Unless you change that model, you can't change anything. When everything is concentrated on making profits, what you see is that human rights, the environment, workers' rights get lost. My God, we can do better than this.